threats that they've had, it just seemed a natural fit to, again, just kind of journal and then slowly, you know, write this book. Part of why we call it the secret marathon is that one of the things that the race organizers did ask us to do to help make sure that we would keep everyone safe It's so important for people to know that we are so privileged uh, to be able to run and to be able to walk outside without any threats to our lives. A lot of it is about just understanding how girls experience the world in the rest of the world and how, you know, girls in Canada were genuinely concerned about their sisters in Afghanistan and thinking about what it must be like if you can't just have a safe space to do what you want to do. In this case it's running, but there are all sorts of things. And for girls in Canada too, not all girls have a safe space where they can do what they want to do. So I think they really related to it and I think it just sort of makes people think you know, when you run at night, it's not necessarily the time you would run, it's not necessarily the temperature that you would run at, but, um, but not everyone gets to make those choices. The more we're aware of it, the more we can do to change it. It's something that's really important for Girl Guides of Canada, and we know because we hear from our members that it's really important as well. It's just important for girls and just men and women alike to know that we're here as a community to grow and create those safe spaces and safe races for women all around the world. What we're asking them to do is join us in a movement for equality. Something that shows our unity, not our discourse. And I think this is what this does.